the world just can't seem to behave for one day, now can it? Recently, there's been a lot of drama ensuing Twitch streamers and their hypocrisy over one measly little ad that played during the Streamer Awards. For those who don't know what the Streamer Awards is, it's something brought on by QT Cinderella, a famous streamer, where they celebrate the streamers that have come far and everyone gets together and has a good time. It's kind of like the Emmys, but for streamers, and it's actually entertaining for once. And it would be on this night that they would air an ad that many would have controversy with, an ad for Fansly. For those who don't know what Fansly is, it's basically bootleg OnlyFans. It's OnlyFans, but without all the PR and disgusting pictures of Nick Kato Avogadro's butthole on it. But now everyone's making these correlations between Aiden Ross and Fansly when Aiden Ross, we have to say hands down, did something far worse. Aiden put unfiltered raw porn in front of the eyes of an underage audience. Fansly at least asks you the stupid question of are you 18? PH doesn't even do that anymore, okay? They just allow you in. It's literally Disneyland, but the, you know, the turnstiles always free. You never have to pay. It's glorious. It's quite sad at times, too. You know, there are precautions. It's not like, you know, it, it's just there up in the world. It's not like you can instantly go through and find all these naughty, you know, solicited account, accounts on Bansley. Believe me, it takes a lot of signing up. It takes a lot of headache, and it's really not worth it. There's at least the precaution of asking if they're 18. And even then, when you get to the front page, it's not like the first thing you see is nudity. No, you just see girls in lingerie, which I was looking at since I was five, so nice. Again, it's not really that good, but again, there are things in place to stop these things from happening. Yeah, it's not perfect because it can't be perfect. It's literally impossible to create the most foolproof thing where kids who grow up on the internet nowadays can't get through with a simple swipe of the keys. It's it's literally impossible to think about these things. While it is a good intention to think about for the kids, it's really not, you know, an option at this point. When kids grow up so technologically advanced and technologically, technologically gifted that they know what they're doing. They know how to get around this stuff by age six, you know. This isn't the dark age of technology anymore. This is the enlightened era where everyone knows how to get around just about everything when they grow up with it. Now, while many did have a problem with this, saying, you know, we shouldn't be promoting stuff like this, it mainly kind of just went by as something that was like, hey, maybe next year we don't do this. But this didn't stop people from saying this was a huge problem. Some people actually did make good videos pointing out how this is a huge problem and how audiences of Twitch are too young to be enforced into stuff like this. You know, it's really the mentality of do this for the kids. And from that came one video that really didn't give any value to anything. That video comes from Mew Kitty attacking Moist Critical, calling him a hypocrite. And people were pointing out that Critical might be a hypocrite for allowing this ad to air without, you know, doing anything to fight against it. Which is just, A, wrong. It's not like he runs the thing. Yeah, Ludwig, another famous streamer, is his best friend, and QT Cinderella is Ludwig's girlfriend. But that doesn't mean that Charlie's going to be in his ear all the time telling him what to do. Just because Charlie doesn't agree with him doesn't mean you know, his word is final. At the end of the day, this is still QT Cinderella's little pony show. You can't just expect him to be the one to pull the strings. I know everyone likes to pull his name and everything as though he's going to be, you know, the grandfather of solving everything, but you have to learn that he really can't fix everything. He's not in charge of literally everything with all the things he has under his hat. But this video points out how hypocritical Charlie is, and I'll spill the beans on the whole video right here. It doesn't. It goes back and forth on two very minor points that she purposely edits out and skips over from time to time just to get her point across. And also, can I say, Mew Kitty, your content isn't that great. I, I'm saying this as like someone who makes content has been for a while. Your content is very zoomy. It's very ADHD-ish. You know, it's very fast. Every clip you take is sped up. You constantly have to reinforce points to try and get them into people's idea, uh, into people's minds. And it's really, really annoying and a really unhealthy kind of content creation, I would say. Also, what are these videos of XQC? Like, it's not like your Eclipse channel or, like, highlighting his funny moments. No, this just looks like legit stalkerism at this point. Maybe you're a stand for XQC, I don't know, but it just seems creepy to me. But in retaliation, Charlie comes back with an absolute banger of a video, making it 40 minutes long, making it four times longer than hers. And I'm sorry, when a person comes back at you with a video four times longer than yours, just to point out how wrong you are, maybe it's time you find a new career path in life. 
And honestly, this all seems a bit familiar. Think about it. A drama slash commentary YouTuber that lives in a Minecraft house that fabricates allegations to ruin people's relationships and people's reputations, and when called out on these allegations, plays the victim and tries to play it all off by taking a couple weeks off social media. It's like I'm looking at Duff Noodles all over again. While the situations aren't exactly the same, you cannot deny the similarities. But in life, there's two paths to YouTubers. YouTuber villains who take easy, scummy ways to climb to the top and don't really have a stable fan base and really just rally people who hate other people for a living. And YouTube heroes who, you know, are once in a lifetime people, but they work hard and grind to get to where they are now. And when small fish go after big fish, you'll always notice the gap in between. You'll always see the view count on theirs be higher than yours, the likes higher than yours. It's because people trust them. No one trusts someone who comes out of nowhere, makes these ridiculous accusations, these ridiculous claims, and fails to even prove a point or even have a stable train of thought. Mew Kitty, I would seriously ho hope you would take this time to reflect upon yourself and your content creation. If not, then, well, I guess you're going to be as credible as the Daily Mail.